What's up, you savages? How you doing? It's your boy, Brian Polito, proud publisher of Coffin Comics. And I'm here doing the program Beer with Brian. Beer with Brian is a program of the Coffin Comics Sworn Club. Are you part of the Sworn Club? If you're not, you should, should consider it. Got a bunch of goodies right off the bat when you join. But also, you get two main advantages. One, you get news 24 hours in advance of everyone else in the globe. Two, you get a one-hour advantage and the great majority of all Coffin Comics promotions. Now, this is a very informal conversation and uh, a lot of Q&A. I do some pop cultural observations, stuff I've been watching and enjoying. And you're feel, feel free to ask anything relevant to pop culture or particularly Coffin Comics. So I think we got one already. Yeah, one from Matt Matt asking, uh, would you ever do a line of what if comics? This is a great question. Would I ever do a line of what if comics? Here's the answer. Yes. So expect some what if like stories in 2026. That's your answer. Here's one from more of a comment from there saying, uh, looking forward to throwing some more cash your way with your new video game. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for uh, considering supporting the game. Please tell people, you know, I think for the game to be successful, we have to go even far beyond the Coffin Comics Lady Death Bean Base. This thing's going to cost almost $1.5 million to make. We don't expect to get it all in the campaign, but man, if we could, that'd be amazing. And it's because it's really traditionally animated with real life human beings drawing it as opposed to computers rendering it. So thank you for your excitement for the game. Ravenheart character is interesting. What inspired his creation from look, personality, sword, and armor? So the character Ravenheart was actually introduced in the Lady Death comics in the late 90s. He's been a recurring character. And then he was last seen in the current Coffin Comics continuity during the story um, Nightmare Symphony. And if you haven't read that, it explains a lot about who he is, what he's about. Now, when you get the game, you're also going to get a little bit more of that story. But if you do read Nightmare Symphony, and then you see that Ravenheart's in the game, and you know that the game is canon, you'll say, what? So I know I've posed more questions than answers, but Ravenheart is cool, and he's been around for about 20 years. Here, I also want to know, are you making any Hellwitch collector boxes? And supporting you guys is a no-brainer. Right on, man. Thank you. Yeah, we definitely expect some more collector's boxes coming up. We love making the collector's boxes. And in fact, we do make the graphic design for the great majority of the images we do. It's just getting the proper supply of these boxes on the regular. Because sometimes they have them. Sometimes they don't. Et cetera, et cetera. Jim wants to know, will there be a Hellwitch trade paperback? Hey, Tim, thanks for your question. Uh, nope, we're going to stick with the premiere format with uh, Hell Witch for now. And maybe in the future, we'd consider, once we get up to 10 chapters, going right to Omnibus. But we've decided that the premiere format is, is the best suited for Hell Witch. I want to know, how did Chaos Comics write comics for WWF back in the Attitude Era? Ah, okay, so that's a fun story. So how did Chaos Comics get the license for WWF Comics? Well, truth of the matter is, two guys worked in our warehouse at the time. They were called the Monty Brothers, and they had a lot of excitement for A, Megadeth, and B, wrestling. And they happened to have contacts towards Megadeth, which actually brought us together for that deal, but they just had a stoke for wrestling. And they inspired us to put together an entire proposal for uh, Undertaker, which we did. And then we straight up cold called the licensing representatives of WWF and asked for a meeting. And we showed up in New York City at the New York licensing show to pitch WWF to make Undertaker comics. Now, literally, as I'm waiting in their waiting area, representatives from Marvel are exiting. And, of course, Marvel could write a big check, all that kind of stuff. But I had this like cocky young attitude where it's like, we would make the best comics on earth. 
So actually, when we got in that room, we had the story laid out. We had preliminary art. We had made a big poster we showed, and we explained what we would do and what we would do with the entire line. And when we walked out, we more or less had that deal. And here's how crazy we were. I am sure in, in, in times of change, right? But what we offered them and what we guaranteed them was fairly minimal, even by those standards. Again, think about it. Marvel could probably write like a $50,000 advance check. We didn't come close to any of that. However, I believe that that relationship between chaos and WWF worked out great for everybody. And they got oodles of cash because, if you remember, our first Undertaker, Undertaker no, uh, number one, was also offered as a variant during WWF Raw. And we sold 115,000 copies direct. It was ridiculous. So that's the story of how the relationship between Chaos and WWF began. Hey, Mr. Goat. So I think uh, anytime now, I guess the current three are supposed to ship. And we have three coming up on deck. And uh, better to get the first set out before we talk about the next ones. Very happy with the relationship with Executive Replicas, and that they, they like our material, they like our characters, and they want to continue making action figures of them. So um, in the next three, we're going to start getting like deep, deep track. One is, a, one is a new Lady Death costume based on insane artwork by Jesse Witchman. It is, from an engineering perspective, it is so complicated it took close to two years to engineer. No joke, no exaggeration. When you see it, you will believe it. Jeff, same thing. Once we collect at least 10 chapters, uh, I think next year, is it next year? This year, <laughs> next year is chapter 10. Uh, the year after, we would consider pulling it all together for an Omni, for sure. Uh, Casey wants to know a little bit. Will the game, after it's released, will there be download, downloadable content? So uh, upon the game's release in April of 2026, I believe it would be Art of, Play, in Art of Play's best interest to continue to offer it to people around the world. And I believe that is uh, the intention. And yes, it, it will be a downloadable game. And even if inside the Kickstarter campaign we reach certain stretch goals, it'll be made into an online multiplayer game as well. Lamorta wears crosses on her attire. Some folks see that odd, given that she's dealing out vengeance. Is she torn between her faith and Seth Uh Without a doubt, Maria Diaz is a conflicted character. And we hope that what we're getting across in her story is the cost of seeking vengeance uh, to her soul. So if you read each one of the story arcs, there's that little uh, element that we're dealing with. I do think that Maria is so, to this day, is so filled with rage over the death of her family that she feels doling out vengeance is her calling. And certainly that's why Santa Muerte called upon her, that she had that, the right ingredients. Is that conflicting with her faith? Yes. And, you know, the, the more interesting characters are conflicted and, you know, they're um, paradoxical. You know, they... They say one thing and they have a set of beliefs and do another. And to me, that's one of the many reasons why Maria is a, uh, a very interesting character to write and work on. Sarah wants to know, if, if the video game does well, will there be an animated movie? Well, if the video game does well, simultaneously, the exploration of something like an animated movie or live action, I don't know that those uh, the pro projects of that particular scale could be crowdfunded, but uh, there's always... It, it talks and whispers and echoes. Coffin Comics itself would not be able to fund something like that. We would need very powerful partners and people with experience in that particular field. So I don't know when that day will come, but I believe it'll be in our lifetime. So, uh, so Spawn from the Beyond. Spawn from the Beyond. Want to know regarding the video game Kickstarter? Yeah. Will, will the Cost of the tiers, will that be revealed beforehand? Or? Yeah, actually, uh, I believe if you saw, yeah, uh, 
we'll, we'll check into that personally because I know we did that review yesterday. We want to make sure that the game folks have enabled the preview function because the prices are up there for sure. Yeah, it's not meant to be a secret. So, you know, myself and Jimmy will check into that and make sure that their preview mode is on so people can see. We're, we are hardwired to self-destruct. Hell yeah. We're always hardwired now, bro. Thanks to you. Uh, okay, yeah. Tim wants to know, besides Lady Death and Raven, uh, will there be any other characters show up in the, the uh, Lady Death video game? So in the Lady Death Demonicron video game, if we reach certain stretch goals, possible unlocks could be other characters but it's a little early to tell. Our plans are pretty ambitious, but it, it has to be fueled by capital to be able to pull it off. So I want to know any other independent creators you've been checking out lately? You know, the independent creator that I, I'm always impressed by is Dan Mendoza. Um, been, I guess, pretty busy with our own stuff. We certainly have a lot of peers whose work I always enjoy, whether that's guys like Marat Michaels and his recent announcement of working with Extreme Studios. I think that's fun. Jimmy Palmiotti. Um, Billy Tucci. Um, as far as what I'm reading might be different. You know, I've been, the, the book that I've been enjoying, I'm actually reading like this longer zombie apocalypse story called Last Man Standing by a writer named Kevin Taylor. I read another book last month by him called How the World Ends and I liked it. So I read this one. I'd say it's kind of pulpy, but I don't care. You know, anything zombie I like. Um, the comic book that I've read most recently and enjoyed has been Avengers Twilight, which is kind of like a future what if like story, very dark. And I have been enjoying that. And yeah, those are some of the recent ones. Hey, Taylor, what's your chance for a Lamorta slash sad girl crossover? Wow, that's a pretty interesting idea. Hey, Jay Taylor, how you doing? Uh, that'd be fun. I guess, it, it, you know, if we could get the minds together, you never know what's possible. Can I do? I plan to see, let's see here, coming up on May 4th, I'm going to go see Psychedelic Furs and John Doe and Zine of X are opening. I'm excited about that. I'm going to go see The Damned in June. And uh, I'm very likely to go see that uh, Lamb of God show in August, although it breaks my rule. I think it's an outside show and it's pretty hot outside. I already got tickets for corn. Uh, coming up in October, I think it's Corn, Spirit Box, and Gojira, and I just I couldn't resist that bill. And there's probably something other ones that I'm forgetting that I've already booked, but yeah, for sure, man. Always trying to see some concerts. Yeah, but now are you interested in doing any licenses like you did with Chaos for wrestling, or maybe that's where the problem? I am currently uninterested in doing any licenses. Uh, the reason being is what's fun about doing the coffin comic stuff is I personally don't have a boss and I was very lucky when I did licensing, it really went very, very smoothly, but I would dislike it to sign up and do a license. And suddenly I have a boss telling me what to do and rewriting stuff and all that, you know, at this particular stage of my life, it'd probably be the least interesting thing in the world to me. But again, I would have to say that everybody I worked with, um, through the years, ICP, Megadeth, Static X, WWF, Universal Pictures on the Mummy. Like, everybody was great. So I really have no complaints. But I mean, I guess that'd be the fear is jumping into a license and suddenly there's like like so much control and suddenly it's no fun. So I don't know. Sarah wants to know what is the next Lady Satanus planned for? The next Lady Satanus, Chapter 2, is planned for May of 2025. The story setting is that early hair metal era on Sunset Strip when bands like Motley Crue and Guns N' Roses were kind of making their bones. That's the setting. And uh, the story title is figured out. It's a nod to that time. So yeah, stay tuned. It's uh, I begin work on that one in about two months. I'm plotting it in the behind the scenes, but I like start working on it in earnest in July. Archangel wants to know, any chance Archangel Michael Story or even visit the heavenly realm in a future story. Yeah, Michael's such a fun character. Uh, obviously, he's been overshadowed in recent years by the dominant female characters. He does make an appearance in this year's storyline, Helageddon. And out of what happens during Helageddon, 
we will definitely have to see more of Michael. Whether it's a spinoff, I'm not quite sure, but uh, you know, there's so many fun characters to explore. He's a cool character. He's not currently like as a standalone or something. It's not really on the playing card, but he's important to this year's story. And because of what happens during this year's story, you will see you have to see more of him in a future storyline. Is that vague enough for you? <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, we got it all sorted out. Yeah, now we're, you know, thanks to Troy Hudson and his fine work, all of this current building we call Coffin Compound is hardwired. So we're plugging in. Well, Ilkhan sounds like a really fun thing. It's happening uh, May 3rd, I guess, of 2025. And I don't know. You're just going to have to stand. It's up to Dan Mendoza. He's the man on that one. So stay tuned. Who knows? Well, that's a great question. Um, I think uh, I'm not against the idea of doing that. I probably am not the person to write it uh, because I'm so busy, like, you know, writing the present. I don't necessarily want to go back and document, but I don't, uh, it could, it, it's something maybe we should do. Cause you know, here we are like all, virtually 10 years into this storyline's history in this universe. I think it could be uh, a reasonable thing to work on. So I think it's, more likely than unlikely. So hell in the coffin verse is quite likely near infinite. And in fact, it might happen on multiple parallel planes. And it's very likely that there are areas in hell that not everyone knows about. So I think it's humongous. I think it's at least the size of the sun. I certainly got inspired by Iron Maiden art when I was younger, whether it's just listening to the music or seeing the art itself. You'd have to imagine that in my formulation of the character Evil Ernie, I can tell you that the things that were kind of going around in my mind were Frankenstein's monster, um, the, the energy of Axl Rose and the Welcome to, Welcome to the Jungle um, video, um, Bill Paxton as the vampire in Near Dark. I just thought his unabashed insanity in the bar scenes were phenomenal. Like, you know, unapologetic, but he's completely charismatic, messing with people. And then, of course, Eddie, Eddie the Head, you know, phenomenal mascot. I think all those characters somehow had, a, a, uh, whether a conscious or unconscious influence on, on a character like Evil Ernie, which is just an unbridled spirit of utter insanity and ultra violence. In fact, may I go so far as to say, being the metalhead that I am, I have a new character coming out called Mike Morg. Now, Mike Morg doesn't really have much in common with a character like Evil Ernie, but what he does have is a storyline that is filled with ultraviolence, some comedy, and heart. And of course, my love of heavy metal and aggressive music and aggressive novels, aggressive comics, aggressive imagery like that, is all influential. Miguel, saying he'll see you on Saturday. The Maker Weekend starts tomorrow. Miguel, I am so excited to see you. I am looking forward to it. We're all going to have a blast. If Troy is watching, Troy, you know, during Sworn Fest, uh, I think, you know, Josh and everybody makes those extra little patches to commemorate each uh, year. If you guys have an extra, could you bring one? Because I like to sew them onto my, uh, my jacket. Hey, David, how are you doing? Uh, I think uh, sleep, I find like this whole new age of metal and where it's heading very interesting. I can't say I've heard the name Sleep Token and I've actually started reading an article about them today in, um, what is it, Metal Hammer, but I haven't heard much about their music, but I'll investigate it. I've been really investigating some new sounds of heavy metal and really fascinated. Like uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of new stuff. Uh, the band Ginger, J-I-N-G-E-R, Poppy, uh, bands like Polyphonic, you know, very, very interesting, new, different interpretations. Out of the new group, uh, there's a band that I really like a lot called Blood Command. 
And believe it or not, they describe themselves as pop death metal. So, and that's a good way of explaining them. It's that's the only way you could say it. But I'll take a look at Sleep Token for sure. Crystal, thank you so much for saying that. You know, it's interesting because in my head, there's always a little more organization that could be done. But I guess I learned at a young age, man, planning kind of gets you the thing that you say you want. It's one thing to say you want something, but you got to plan, organize, and head toward it. So organization seems to be an important discipline to achieving some of your goals in life. Thank you. The new Rob Zombie, I've heard nothing. So is there new Rob Zombie? All right. Oh, no, I haven't any heard any new Zombies, but I, I'll look out for Zombies for sure. I was uh, re-listening to some of the cool Calabris that I've enjoyed, that I've been lucky enough to do videos for. And I, I always smile because I'm just like, man, like there's certain bands. I think we all know this, right? There's certain bands that are so phenomenal. And if more people heard them, uh, every, everybody should just get on board. I don't know. Yeah, I've always been... Uh, I like Zombiest. Uh, certainly, you know, I think the G's are Calabrese in that category. There's other good bands in that category. You know, shout out to my boys over there at um, Rosedale's, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, it's a hard punk's a great category, and there's some really phenomenal players in, in that genre. Do you have any favorite line of dialogue from Lady Death you wish? Do I have any fa favorite lines of dialogue from Lady Death? I like a line of dialogue that Mike McLean came up with. And he says, she, he has her say, um, what fuckery is this? And that's totally Mike. I think that, that I, I love coming back to that one. It's like, this is a good chance to use that line again. What kind of, what, what fuckery is this? I love it. Oh, I like that idea. That's fun. You know, that's, uh, look, the future is unwritten. If uh, there's enthusiasm for this game, Art of Play has already said, hey, let's do some more. We do like working with the guys. So who knows? The future is unwritten. Uh, Chris wants to know, have you heard of Heartline Comics? Spiff, I have not heard of that company. We're caught up with questions right now. New TV shows, are you watching anything? Let's see here. So new TV shows and movies. I saw the movie Civil War on Friday when it came out. It's written and directed by Alex Garland. He wrote 24, uh, 28 Days Later. He also wrote and directed the movies Annihilation, Ex Machina, and uh, is it called, is it uh, Men? And so I personally love this movie, and I don't know what people were expecting from it, but uh, what I really got out of it was that this was a story of particularly photojournalists and how one main pho photojournalist, because of everything that she had seen in the world, had almost become kind of deadened. And not that she wanted to, she took under her wing a younger photojournalist and, and an older person, and they go on this journey. And in a sense, their roles kind of switch towards the end of the movie. There was a lot of awe and spectacle as well, particularly the last... 20 minutes, half hour is like high amplitude. And I personally enjoyed it completely. And then as far as shows are concerned, I don't know anything about the game Fallout, never played it, but watched the first episode yesterday and enjoyed it. Uh, Netflix has a show, again, I knew nothing about it beforehand, called Three Body Problem. And I watched the first episode. I think we'll continue to watch that as well. Um, Francisca Plato and I watch every single solitary uh, comedy special that is on Netflix as soon as it debuts. I don't care who the comedian is, no matter what, we'll at least give them like a 15 minute chance. And there's just been so many good ones. Uh, Shane Gillis, I thought was a hoot. I mean, most of them, Tom Segura is super funny. I mean, most people on there wind up, you know, if they get a Netflix special, they're not giving them a special because they suck. So usually they're funny. So we're up for all kinds of humor in our household. So uh, particularly boundary pushing stuff. So, um, yeah, that's some of the stuff I like and some of the stuff that I've been watching. We've got time for a couple more questions. Okay. Uh, Salman wants to know, are there going to be any cut scenes in the Lady Dead video game? So, uh, the question is, will there be any cut scenes in the Lady video, Lady Dead video game? Yes, there's going to be 15 cut scenes in there. There's actually going to be a 45 second animated origin story, and then there's going to be 15 cut scenes, believe it or not. 
So Lady Death, I think we have her at, oh, I got to remember. Maybe if David Balance is still watching, maybe he remembers. She's either 5'10 or 6 foot, and then she has heels on top of that. Yeah, we actually have all that stuff, like all her measurements, every every element of her body measurement, all that kind of stuff. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm happy you're getting them down there. That's amazing. I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you for everything. When I created Lady Death, I had no idea whatsoever that she would A, be a big character or that she would have the staying power that she did at all. But this is what I did know. So I created the character Evil Ernie. And early on in my career, I would go to compa conventions and I would sell these prints of pages from Evil Ernie for a dollar. Um, around that time, and I would use this money to raise money just to keep things going, you know, send some money to Hughes. And um, we were doing a, a Lady Death calendar. So the first color image was Lady Death, and there was like a little heart in front of her. And that was a color image. And I would start selling that print just out of regular like copy paper. This was early 90s. And I would sell those for $5. And so I'd have like 10 Evil Ernie prints and one Lady Death print. And what I observed was we were selling five Lady Death things to every one Ernie. And very simply, I said, okay, one day we got to expand and tell her story. It really was just truly that simple. So uh, I didn't in the beginning know, but I saw very quickly that there was an interest and kind of followed, followed people's interest. And, you know, here we are 30 plus years later, 33 years later. Folks, I want to thank you so much for tuning in with Beer with Brian, where I did not drink any beer because I got to go sign some more comics. And uh, this is a program of the Coffin Comics Sworn Club. If you haven't, please do join the Sworn Club. Because this is an intimate conversation between all of us, I also would like to say this, that um, longtime OG super fiend David Balance, who lives in Washington, D.C., got ripped off recently of his comics. If you are in, go to the Cyber Fiends post and you can get the details. And maybe if you see these books show up, you can help David. We're trying to find a happy medium between talking a lot about it and not talking a lot about it so we don't alert the bad guys. But we do want to get David reunited back with his books. So go to the Cyber Fiends Facebook page, forward slash Cyber Fiends. You'll get more detail in some of the distinguishing elements of his collection that could help uh, better inform you of what makes it special and maybe if something comes out of the woodwork, how you could alert the authorities. When it comes to this particular topic, again, what I'd say is if you do encounter some of the bad guys, don't get too uh, aggressive. May mainly observe and report. Report back to David so he could take appropriate measures. So thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I look forward to seeing you soon. Remember, we have some excitement coming up. We have the official preview of La Muerta, Lady Death, which continues the Hilligan storyline next Wednesday at 4 p.m. Arizona time. Next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Arizona time, we actually launch the Lady Death Demonicron game Kickstarter. So please be part of that and more to come if you are in the Phoenix, Arizona, Mesa, Arizona area, please, you are cordially invited to visit the Coffin Compound this Saturday between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. as we have the Keith Garvey Artist Celebration. We're flying in Keith Garvey from upstate New York. He is going to be here live, signing brand new exclusives, doing remarks and signatures. It's just going to be a good hangout day for everybody. So thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. Have a great day. Yeah.